Welcome to Unit 1, Lesson 5, Scientific Notation. So let's go ahead and get started. So when we talk about scientific notation, it's just a standardized way of writing very big or very small numbers. This way we're not there all day writing out large numbers or small numbers. So let's look at what goes into the different parts of writing a number in scientific notation. So notice here I underlined the 6.02 that particular part of our scientific notation format is considered the coefficient. And then I also underlined, notice that 23 is raised, it's an exponent. Those are the two main components of writing a number in scientific notation aside from the times 10 part. Now, notice our number here is between one and 10. So all numbers in scientific notation are gonna be between one and 10. So really it's only gonna be one number to the left of the decimal point. So let's take a look at some examples. So whenever we are dealing with big numbers, so these are numbers that are larger than zero essentially, the exponent is always gonna be positive. So if I have an example of the earth being 4,600,000,000 years old, I can write that as 4.6 times 10 to the nine years. It just saves us the time from writing out all those zeros. If I have a small number, the exponent will always be negative. This is a number that is less than zero. So notice all the zeros that are occurring here. I don't want to have to write all of them. So we can write it in scientific notation, 1.993 times 10 to the negative 22nd grams. So notice really small number and negative exponent. All right, so when we have scientific notation, we can convert back and forth between standard notation, so that's that really long number, and scientific notation, so that's the times 10 to the negative 22 number. All right, so you're going to try some examples of converting to and from scientific notation and standard notation. All right, now that you've practiced converting between scientific and standard notation, let's look at solving equations with scientific notation. So we're going to break it up into three different sections. So we have multiplying, dividing, and then adding and subtracting. For multiplying, you're going to be adding your exponents. For dividing, you'll be subtracting exponents. And for adding or subtracting, you're going to keep the exponent, but they have to be the same number. They can't be two different numbers. So we'll go over examples of each so you get an idea of what we're talking about. So we'll start with multiplying. So before we do that, Let's take a look at a little calculator tip. So most calculators have a shortcut to deal with the power of 10. So on your calculator, you might see a capital E or a capital EE -E button. If you press that, it takes the place of a times 10. So you can just simply type in 1.356 E37, and we'll know exactly what you're talking about. So just a little calculator shortcut if you don't wanna have to type in the multiplication and then 10 and then the little caret button, a little shortcut. Back to multiplication. So first thing we're going to do is you're going to do the math. You're going to round the sig fig. All right, so with, so with multiplication, you're going to do, and dividing, you're going to, so with multiplication and dividing, you're going to do the math first. Then you're going to round based on your sig fig rules. So that goes back to the previous video with rounding. Then you're going to deal with exponent adjustment. So you might need to adjust your exponent if you know that needs to be done. And then you're going to make sure your number is written in proper scientific notation, meaning it's between 1 and 10. So let's go ahead and look at an example. All right. All right, so in this example, we have 4.70 times 10 to the fifth, and we're gonna multiply that by 7.3 times 10 to the negative third. So we're multiplying, so our exponents get added, and we're gonna do our multiplication of our coefficients. So if I multiply my coefficients, 4.70 times 7.3 times 10 to the adding our exponents, five plus negative three, 
when I do the math for that. So 4.70 times 7.3 is 34.31. And then we're going to do times 10 to the second. So 5 plus negative 3 is 2. So our exponent looking good. And next we have to deal with our coefficient. So when we round, we have to do it based on our rounding rules. So we're multiplying, so we're going to round based on least number of significant figures. In this case, is 2. 7.3 only has two sig figs. It's the least amount. So when I round my answer, it's going to be 34 times 10 to the second. And then last, we just have to make sure, so my exponent looks good. We're going to have to now adjust for scientific notation. So it has to be between 1 and 10, which it's not here. So we have to adjust it. We're going to move the decimal point, and we have to move it to the left. So because we're moving it to the left, it's going to increase our exponent. So we're going to end up with 3.4 times 10 to the third. And that would be our final answer. All right, you're going to go ahead and try this division problem, and then you'll submit your answer on Edpuzzle. All right, let's talk about adding and subtracting. So a little bit different in terms of the order of things. So first, we want to adjust our exponent. We want to make sure that the exponents match. Then we're going to do some math. So we'll either add or subtract our coefficients, and we'll carry down our exponents. Then we're going to round based on our sig fig rules. So remember, if we're adding and subtracting, least number of decimal places is our rule. And then we're going to make sure that our final answer is in proper scientific notation and adjust our exponent as needed. So let's look at an example. 5.6 times 10 to the 7th plus 4.6 times 10 to the 8th. Notice our exponents are not the same. So the first thing we have to do is adjust to make sure our exponents are the same. So typically what I do is I take the larger uh, exponent and we're gonna make it match the smaller exponent. So in this case, our larger one is 4.6 times 10 to the eighth, so eighth power, smaller number. So in order to make it smaller or make it match times 10 to the seventh, if I look at 4.6, it's got a positive exponent. So it's gonna be a larger number, larger than zero. Our new number will be 46 times 10 to the 7th. So I just move the decimal point one spot closer to where the decimal point would be if written in standard notation or big number. So I moved it to the right one space, and now it's times 10 to the 7th. Still the same number. Now my exponents match. We're going to do some math. So we're not going to touch the exponents anymore until the end, where if we need to adjust, we can. But when we do our mathematical operations, our exponents are staying as is for now. So 5.6 plus 46, and we're keeping our times 10 to the 7th. So you're going to get 51.6 times 10 to the 7th. Our next step, rounding based on sig fig rules. So we need to do least number of decimal places. So if we look, we have 5.6 and 46, least number of decimal places. There are no decimal places in 46, so we're going to drop that 0.6, so we're going to have to round up to 52 times 10 to the 7th. Um, and our next step, now that we've done this, is we have to make sure that it's in proper scientific notation, which it's not. So we need to adjust for that. So once again, we're going to move our decimal point, and I need to move it to the left one. So when I do that, it's going to be 5.2 times 10 to the 8th. You're going to go ahead and try this practice problem. It's a subtraction problem. So you're going to walk through the similar steps to what we just did. And that is it for this video. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down. Other than that, thank you for watching and see you soon.